What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today I've done the unthinkable. I played Halo Infinite. What I've done is heresy. Is it? I'm also getting over a sickness, so if I sound a little, a little stuffy, that's why. But the last time I seriously played Halo Infinite was shortly after Elden Ring came out. I maybe played it two or three times for footage after that. So it's, it's been a hot minute. Been a long time, comrade. And I wanted to see what has changed in all that time. What has improved, if anything? It couldn't have gotten worse, could it? I'm here to ask the important questions. Has Halo Infinite recovered? Now, before you brand me with the mark of shame, uh, let me explain. Yes, I did do a video saying I was done with Halo Infinite. It's at this point of the video that I inform all of you, I'm officially boycotting Halo Infinite. The basic gist of that video was because of a lot of broken promises, consistent disappointment, and the lack of split-screen co-op for campaign, which was the very first thing that was promised for Infinite. It's still not in the game. So why have I changed my mind? Well, I realized that the people who promised split-screen aren't working on Halo anymore, right? The guy who replaced the guy who replaced the guy who made that promise is gone, <laughs> right? All the old leadership is gone, out the door. Peter Hines is in charge. So what exactly would I be boycotting? It wouldn't be the people who released Halo Infinite the way they did. I'd be boycotting the people trying to fix it and make it better. I'm also a huge Halo fan and I want this series to succeed like any fan would. You know, I'm not someone who only talks about these games just to hate them. Now there's gonna be some people who might be upset that I'm giving Infinite another chance, but why shouldn't I? If Cyberpunk is getting another chance, then I think Infinite deserves one too. Now, I'm not saying 343 has completed their redemption arc and the anime is over with Halo Infinite. No, that remains to be seen. But at the very least, Halo Infinite finally seems to be in a stable state with competent leadership and a team with a cohesive vision. And they can put out regular high quality updates like things we're asking for. So I relent. I still think this company should make good on the promises that were made, but I wanna see what this game has to offer and tell you whether or not you should consider playing it again. But since Halo Infinite has been getting its fair share of updates, I think you could use a style update too. That's where Holtzkern comes in, the sponsor of today's video. You might have noticed the slick manly jewelry I'm wearing. Well, you too can look this good and be this based. Making jewelry for men is really hard to get right, and Holtzkern does it right. They offer a wide range of fashionable watches, rings, bracelets, jewelry, and even sunglasses. All the products come at very reasonable prices. Now, I'm a guy that likes gold, dark metal, steel, and wood, like a real man. So I got this beautiful maple and gold numerary ring. And most of the jewelry comes in different color schemes too. I mean, look at how gorgeous these are. This German-based company does things efficiently and right. So if you're not totally satisfied with your order, they have a 24-day return policy. So what are you waiting for? It's time to say Auf Wiedersehen into your old style and spruce up your appearance with Holtzkern. And if you click the link in the description and pin comment and use code ACTMAN15, I'll give you 15% off your entire order. Thank you, Holtzkern, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. Dude, it's been almost two years since Infinite came out. If you haven't played in a long time like me, the first thing you're gonna notice is a revamp of the main menus. Yes. New aesthetics, new backgrounds, new color schemes, different loading screens, and they even added some dope new menu music. This makes me feel like I'm experiencing something new, right? It was always exciting to log into Overwatch or God forbid League of Legends when a new patch dropped because you'd see like a new background, a new musical theme. So I'm glad Infinite is finally doing that too. That's what live service games should do. They're also finally doing something with that whole banished AI Eratus theme, and it looks pretty damn good to me. Well done, art department. More of this in the future. Also, side note, season five is set to drop on October 18th. Season four came out June 20th, so that's about four months. Sounds like they've achieved that seasonality they were looking for. Kudos. So I scroll over to the matchmaking playlist and... Do my eyes deceive me? So, my eyes are correct. What is this, content? It's impossible. Beautiful content. Look 
team snipers <laughs> super fiesta team doubles the slayer playlist can we get a can we get a screenshot of uh, the playlist at launch compared to now night and day difference so remember when infinite came out and the first event they had planned to kick off their live service was hey go play fiesta yeah that was pretty lame interesting enough there's a tenrai 3 event going on right now and i wonder if they've done anything to make the seasonal events more eventful oh oh Oh, yes, this mode kicks ass. It's so fucking awesome. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, baby, look at this play. Wow, that guy just blew up. Everyone is basically a ninja. Grapple shots, swords, plasma grenades, and the occasional overshield. Now, this might sound pretty basic, but the maps. The maps slap titties, bro. They slap big ol' bongos. And there's eight of them. This limited seasonal event playlist has eight brand new high quality forge maps designed by Halo fans for this one specific mode. That's really good. That's actually really good. Each map has a distinct samurai Japanese-esque Hayabusa theme and oh, fuck. They're really fun. These maps are fantastic. Hill control over extermination. This mode also doesn't just have Slayer in it. It's got strongholds, land grab, and some objective modes, which all play a little bit differently. This is weirdly addicting too. I think it's really fun trying to master the movement with the grapple shot in these very vertical maps. Also, sword clashing is always epic. Oh, Ooh, oh. here we go. Damn it. This, this feeling, I... I know this feeling. Like I want to keep playing. Oh, oh, look at that stick. Look at that stick and he's back in the game. Fuck. Come on. Okay, so the game is like 75 gigabytes, which is a heavy price to pay. But I would honestly recommend installing it just to get a taste of this mode, especially while it's limited. And like, that's the exact feeling that an event in a live service game should give you. Like you need to play it now. If this mode came out like two weeks after launch like this, populations would have just boom. Again, compare regular Fiesta with a Ninja Samurai attack on eight brand new maps and oh. Oh, that's what I thought. I'm impressed. 343, this is really well done. The event pass is kind of lame because they're still recycling tiers for like the same four emblems. But I finished it in like four matches, so it's not a big deal. So that was pretty fun. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is that? Could it be? I leveled up. And not just in the battle pass. I have military ranks now? By the rings, this is too much. That's right, Halo Infinite has added a progression system, a real one. Now, yes, for many things I compliment in the game, we could sit here with our arms crossed and say, should have been there at launch. It, it, we all know that, we all know that. And I'm glad it's here because the alternative is it not being here at all. <laughs> Regrettably, you don't actually unlock anything through this new progression system. Everything's still tied to the battle pass in the store. But it's nice to finally have something to keep track of how much time you've put into Halo Infinite. And they say this on their blog post. Ultimately, we wanted to make sure that we are recognizing the time you invest in Halo Infinite. Ensuring that your career rank shows up and is visible to all whenever and wherever possible is key to that celebration. Echoes my same sentiments. I also want to say to wh whoever decided that battle passes wouldn't expire in later seasons, give that person and metal if they're still around. It's such a fantastic quality of life feature that other games with battle passes really need to adapt. And I say this as someone coming back from a long hiatus. I'm sure there might be other people who try the game after not playing it for a while, and you're gonna be thankful for this. Also, remember when all the XP you got
got was gated behind those dumb fuck challenges that were mandatory to unlock tiers in the battle pass. Long gone are the days of kill three wasps with fucking frag grenades. That was a real challenge, by the way. And instead, the challenges are things that you don't even have to look at to complete them. 343 has, in my opinion, fixed one of the biggest and most consistent problems I had with Halo Infinite. How the progression system used to dictate how you played the game. Go play Infinite however the hell you want. Oddball can't hurt you anymore. You're not forced to play Oddball anymore. You will level up no matter what, and it feels way better. You can also see people's ranks during the match intro, the post-game carnage report, and along their nameplates. Now, I still don't think this uh, leveling system is better than Reach's, so it could still use like some improvements, but regardless, this is overall a massive W for Halo Infinite and 343. All right, fellas, so so things are looking pretty good. You feeling nostalgic yet? Well, you better be because we got Squad Battle. Now, what is Squad Battle? This is a new playlist featuring a selection of classic 8v8 BTB action on iconic Halo maps. Wait, we're home. We're home? Valhalla? This means we now have playlists for free-for-all, 2v2, 4v4, 8v8, and 12v12. We're covering all the bases now, I think. At least for multiplayer. And our forgotten son. Remember him? Remember this guy? Waterworks? He has made his triumphant return. And it's actually really exciting to see this somewhat forgotten Halo 2 map be remade for like the first time ever. Officially remade. This playlist is quite honestly a game changer because the best part about it is seeing Halo Infinite Sam box and mechanics being used on maps we all know and love. It's crazy how well everything works. I think that's a testament to how finely tuned Sprint has been, and it's a major difference to Infinite's like regular BTB offering. But vehicles work and feel way better on these maps because you can actually move around, maneuver, and evade. The problem with vehicles in the old BTB maps is you just, you felt like you couldn't go anywhere. And they've also buffed vehicle health across the board, I think. This is a godsend. Now when you get in like a Warthog, Ghost, or Banshee, it doesn't blow up after someone sneezes on it. Nice. Oh, wow. Vehicles in general feel much, much better and satisfying. I highly recommend this mode as well. That being said, all is not perfect. There's still some balancing issues I have. EMPing vehicles is still way too easy and far too effective. And I also noticed that it's been two years, right? And they've added like one new weapon and two new pieces of equipment nothing else the sandbox that's honestly kind of wild to me especially if you compare it to like halo 5 i expected to see the mantis or goshog or or some vehicle from halo wars 2 by now all right just bring us the plasma rifle give us the goddamn plasma rifle oh speaking of the pulse carbine is actually good now it's crazy all I want is that. oh my god what the fuck the pulse carbine is busted this gun used to be utter dog shit and now it's honestly might be overpowered the squad battle playlist really shows off the capabilities of forge because these are classic maps perfectly recreated i mean like down to a t and they look damn sexy yo this remake is sick dude they even got a couple benches over here check it out hey what wow not only did he kill me but he destroyed my bench too what a dick. Valhalla, Exile, Zanzibar, Rat's Nest, and Waterworks. So five maps is some pretty good variety. I think there's also like five maps in the normal BTB playlist, so 10. Bro, I don't know what's happened, but, but it feels like the, the old leadership must have just been sitting there like, nope, we're not gonna make content. Nope, <laughs> like, I don't know what changed. <laughs> The leadership, that's what act, man. So I also tried out the BTB social playlist, which has all the wacky experimental cool modes that you'd see typically in like action sack. One of the coolest was Escalation Slayer. It's essentially gun game, but there's 24 people and they're on teams. It's a really cool spin on the gun game formula, but also feels like uniquely Halo. You get weapons and equipment and then you cycle through tiers until your team reaches the last tier. What? How did I whiff that? <laughs> Just slowly advance with There we go. There's a cool dynamic, kind of like in gun game, where you have a certain weapon that might have an edge over what your opponent has at that time. So it makes the firefights pretty interesting. They're also testing out reworks to the stockpile mode. You know, the one that would snowball incredibly easily with all the power seeds and stuff. That was fun for a bit, but it became really gimmicky. So I'm glad they're reworking it. Also, they got Super Fiesta. And like Halo 5, it comes with all those wacky, overpowered variant weapons that we saw in the campaign. Every playlist I've hopped into so far has gotten a booster shot to fight off the content drought infection. Speaking of... Infection. Infection. It's finally here. Hell, it's about time. 
This version will probably be somewhat divisive amongst Halo fans, but I think it's a decent and unique take on the staple Halo Zombies mode. All the maps have these like cool red grids that glow and make them feel different. Remember what I said about the main menu? Yeah, when you, ch when you change visuals like this, it feels new. They also make great use of Forge again by creating a lot of like destructible barriers, cover, uh, like in the olden days of Halo 3 Infection and those maps. It's also nice to have more than just like a shotgun and pistol all the time. And you're encouraged to explore and find weapons grenades and equipment it's quite a bit of fun there's so many maps modes and playlists now it's like the playground is open i can climb on the monkey bars the thing with halo of course is that there always could be more right griff ball firefight invasion but so far what i've played has made me want to keep playing That's always a good sign whenever I'm like writing a video and putting it together when I'm like, gee, I'd rather be playing the game I'm making a video on rather than make a video on it. Boom, he gets another. There's also this cool like temporary HCS playlist where you can play and potentially win tickets to go to the Halo World Championship Series in Seattle. That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm surprised more games don't do stuff like that. Play the game and win tickets to go see professionals play the game live. Of course, there's Forge and obviously it's a powerhouse. I know I'm never going to be able to use it properly because my brain very small. But the weirdest thing about Halo Infinite is it came out with Forge and a custom browser, but there's not many games being hosted on it right now. Honestly, ever since custom games were broken at release, it left a bad taste in my mouth and I just didn't really feel compelled to try them out. I imagine they're fixed now, but maybe I'll check them out on a stream sometime. Go follow me on Twitch. I'll start streaming when I get back from vacation. It is somewhat sad that a lot of people have checked out of Halo. I mean, I'm no exception. There's a good reason why they have, but there's clearly been a lot of time and effort put into these latest updates to the point where I think it's a good time to start dipping your toes back in to see if you enjoy the feel of the water. There are some aspects of the game that could still be improved. I find it baffling that there are hundreds, if not thousands of cosmetics for Spartans armor and all the UNSC weapons and vehicles and not one for any of the banished stuff. And just from a business perspective, I feel like 343 is still only monetizing like half of the game. I, I don't know what the deal is, but the same thing also applies to playable elites, which again would be cool. If you give us elites, you can monetize elite skins too. I just, I'm talking from business perspective, guys. Also, the armor core system is still pretty dog water. I'm not sure they'll ever make everything cross core. I also saw this awesome clip from Hyper, who does a lot of dope reload animations. He's worked on Call of Duty and I think Titanfall as well. And this animation is just goddamn. Doesn't it make you miss assassinations? This series can compete in the modern day and the excitement and population around launch proves that. Now I think this series needs that X factor. It needs that operations mode, a galactic conquest or a battle royale. It needs that, that breakout mode that'll draw a lot of eyes back to it. And perhaps if the leaks are to be believed, Firefight might be rumored. I, I don't know, fellows, I don't know. That leadership change is looking better all the time. Perhaps this also has something to do with Microsoft releasing the hiring freeze so 343 can hire new employees. Or maybe all the people working now understand the code behind the game and can make changes much more efficiently. Whatever the case, Halo Infinite is in a way better state than it's ever been. But has it recovered? Has time healed all wounds? Yes and no. It has recovered a lot of content and quality of life stuff that makes it way easier to enjoy the core gameplay. It has not recovered a significant amount of its former player base. First impressions matter a lot. For some, it might be too little too late, but who knows? Worst games have made better comebacks. But thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe to the Act Man for more awesome content. Don't forget to check out Holtzker and get yourself some fine ass jewelry and use code ACTMAN15 to get 15% off your entire entire order. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace.